Hi, Saints. Well, we've got a little biblical prophecy update here. Um, the other day, I think it was in the uh, quick video I did just asking for, uh, I think I was in, trying to announce the uh, live session with Brother Patrick that later got canceled for tonight. <clears throat> But in there, I was made a quick reference to an article in a video that somebody was trying to claim that the president of the EU, European Council, I guess it is, um, had made some goofy comment at the end of June about consulting with um, leaders of other planets, <laughs> uh, you know, like aliens. Um, and... I get really suspicious, you know, this before it's news, anybody can post to it. And there's been plenty of scams that have been put out here for people to chase uh, and misrepresentations. And so I was asking somebody to, to watch the video of the speech because that's, you know, that's available online here. And if they knew French, I wanted to find somebody that could translate it because I really you know, I've been saying this for a couple of years and, and uh, you know, Dr. Tom Horn and Chris Putnam and, you know, dozens, Gary Stearman and, you know, a lot of the people that watch <clears throat> prophecy, theologians and teachers and, and the like, see that, you know, there's the alien deception is probably the lie that people are going to believe. And it's probably tied to the return of the Nephilim. And I've personally done several videos showing how, yes, it appears from the Bible that they do reappear in the end times. And if you look at the book of Joel, I really think that in context, all three chapters are talking about the end times army. And I believe they are Nephilim. And so this is why this has sort of got me intrigued is you know, if if the president of the European Council or whatever, the, if he's European Commission, sorry, I keep saying that wrong. If he's saying out loud in a public forum that this is w where he's getting direction from or communicating with, then it really is firming up as unbelievable as it might be to sort of, uh, you know, a more rational mind it's probably firming up that interpretation of the bible and so i think it's very significant and it would definitely tie us to the end times because looking at joel one it talks about that army being a plague but they're superhuman because even when they fall on a sword they don't die and then in joel 2 i'm very convinced that the first battle that's discussed there is an army coming from the north or the hidden place and then in Joel 3, it looks like the Battle of Armageddon. And, uh, you know, there's a supernatural aspect to some of this as well. So saying all that, you know, I want to be really careful when I look at this because I personally have not seen, you know, an alien. <laughs> but there's, there's millions of people that claim to have even been abducted. And there's several reports out that once people have used the name of Jesus, these things fled. And that does give you the distinct impression that they're not just creatures from another planet, but they really are, <clears throat> you know, from the dark side, they're interdimensional, you know, probably my guess would be that they're uh, artificial and body, artificial bodies created for um, the demon spirits that came from the Nephilim. I kind of think that might be the connection. But, you know, I know this topic is kind of way out there for a conservative Bible kind of a person, but that is where the Bible leads you to. At least some notion of something strange like the return of the Nephilim in the end times, if you consider the passages. And so, you know, I, I ask people to go look at, did this Jean, is it Jean-Claude Juncker? Um, did he really say this? And here's another article out today. Again, on before it's news, I'm like, oh, great. Is this the only place reporting this? You know, but they're 
they have the French and then they have the English translation. And I'm like, well, you know, I want to see if he really said that. So I went to the European Commission's website. Sorry, my browser is slower than a snail. And it, it it's like, hold it, doesn't exactly say it. it says, make no mistake, those who are watching us from afar are concerned. I've met and listened to several leaders. They are very worried because they are wondering about the course the European Union will take. So we must reassure the Europeans who are watching us from further away. So we must reassure Europeans and those who are watching us from further away. Sorry. So you leave. You know this official transcript is very nebulous, and it it leaves out the reference to leaders of other planets. It's just leaders, several leaders. And so I thought, well, okay, there's, it's an internet hoax. <clears throat> and then, oh, I hate this website, okay. And then I come down here and they actually say, well, the official transcript that they also publish here doesn't have in it what he actually says and they, they break it down you know, the very statements I just read, and I saw and heard and listened to several executives, and they were very worried. And then he's, they say here in this article, when you listen to the audio loop, what he actually says is the phrase, Degenerates d'autres planets, which I don't speak French, but it says the leaders of other planets. Okay, and so I thought, <laughs> okay. I want to hear this phrase for myself coming from the guy's mouth because this is the, you know, the smoking gun, right? And so I'm pretty sure it's there, Saints. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I can play it for you here. Hang on. Des dirigeants d'autres planètes, ils sont... Did you hear it? It was uh, des gens des planètes. You just back up. I want you to hear it. There. So he definitely says something there that sounds like what they're claiming down here. Um, I really, I really feel like, uh, yeah, I'm hampered by not knowing French, but he says something that, you know, according to this translation, isn't in the official and then just to double check everything, I pasted the French. That, and I tried to listen to make sure every one of these words was in there. And the ones in particular, you know, I wanted to make sure that were in there. And so the full translation here would include and the other plants leaders who are also very concerned. And so I sort of suspect he said it. I guess that's what I'm saying. And again, if somebody watching this video knows French, I would love you to listen to that whole clip and and say, you know, is that what he's saying? But it sure seems like it. Checking as best I can, not knowing French. So I think that's very prophetic from a whole different angle. And then today, um, you know, Brother Stephen Ben Noon talks about how Netanyahu's proclamation here he authorized 800 more settlements for Israelis but then he also authorized 600 uh, for the Palestinians and his point is that it's clear based on where these settlements are being approved are that Netanyahu is operating by some sort of two-state solution concept <clears throat> And then the brother goes through and he, he references other things that have been strange lately about proclamations coming out of Israel and the validating of uh, water sources and where they came from that would point you to the you know prior history of the Jews being there at the Temple Mount. And so he's saying, you know, the third temple stuff is about to be announced. Because you see concessions going on both sides, building more Israeli settlements, building a Palestinian settlements, archaeology being confirmed that would point to the Jews having been in the land from before. 
and then of course I checked that article he was sourcing I guess I'm just really suspicious tonight but it does appear here 600 homes in the Arab neighborhood of Biet Safafa also approved and now that's in the eastern part I guess which would make sense uh, here southern eastern part of Jerusalem maybe I don't know so having not been there you know I can't confirm necessarily that either but these things are making sense to me I mean that's how close the third temple construction is that very likely an agreement's already been signed and you guys know there's been a couple of trips to the Pope recently by these different leaders here and so even that part of it seems to be gelling that you know somehow the Pope has got his fingers in what these leaders now are announcing and you know agreeing to and I'm sure you guys have been following the news but Turkey made amends with Russia ding 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 <laughs> can you say war of Gog and Magog coming and and uh, they're using that guy in Turkey the he's a I guess he's an imam but they sure picked a a crazy odd one he's famous and I guess he's an author but he's got a harem of women uh, I forget if he calls them the bunnies or something but if you if you're a strict Islam believer how do you ever line up behind this guy but supposedly that's helping to position Turkey to be in agreement with you know the building of the third temple and Turkey having influence generally over Shia and Sunni because of the historic Ottoman Empire so that might actually all be very important there that Turkey's making amends they apologize for the downing of the Russian jet they're getting some sort of a an alliance together on on uh, economic fronts and then all of a sudden you see the Pope being involved brokering potentially some of these dialogues and then Netanyahu approving settlements on both sides are in Jerusalem which is just very curious so Saints I just thought you know these are all little bits of the puzzle that are definitely biblical and I thought I'd point them out tonight because it just, again, it shows you how close we're getting. I don't know when we go. <clears throat> that brother of, at uh, Informed Christians, uh, Daniel, he's completely convinced that we have to go before the 13th of July or 13th or 14th of July based on Genesis. Uh, I'll show you guys um, what he's looking at. It's Genesis 49. I think it's verse 10 okay it says here Genesis 49:10. oh and if you hear thunder in the background maybe we're going right now <laughs> there's a wild storm coming through here in Minnesota right now so the sky is completely dark gray green and set so it's pretty ominous um, <clears throat> The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering be, binding his fold unto the vine, and his ass colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Now, I get excited, you know, because he's excited. But he's relating this to a sign in the heaven, the line of the tribe of Judah being you know the constellation and right now Jupiter which in his understanding would be the scepter I guess or the reference to uh, uh, the king planet and right now it's about to exit from between the feet of the constellation <clears throat> which will happen on the 13th or 14th I forget which one he says and he thinks that's this passage um, and I, I'm intrigued by it because it says, and shall the gathering of the people be? Um, you know, I, I look at the commentaries. I always try and, you know, keep these things with the historical understanding. And then if I really think the Lord is showing me something, I'll point out, I try to point out 
the way it's typically interpreted, and then I try and give more context if I if I personally can't agree because there are all these brilliant people before us, right? You don't want to go off the rails. So, um, yeah, there's too much here to <laughs> to read to you. There's a whole bunch of different interpretations of just those verses there, 10 and 11. <clears throat> but Shiloh is very likely the Messiah, and part of the debate was that. And then the scepter not departing, kingship or rule, ruling authority out of Judah until he returns is kind of what they're, they're saying in the commentary there, you know, until... Because he's the peace giver, the tran tran tranquilizer is how it was, I think, referenced in the Septuagint according to that interpretation. And so he's the promised one for the Jewish people. And now you guys know there's both the rapture of the church, the gathering of the church to the Messiah, but there's also the big end time gathering of the Jewish people and they go through their judgment process. I think it's the fulfillment of, you know, the final fulfillment of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Tabernacles, and binding his fold to a vine, and as is called to a choice vine, shows the divinity because his vineyard is precious, and he washed his garments in wine, his clothes in the blood of grapes. Now, for me, that screams what happens in the tribulation period. And then when you see Christ coming, uh, the Old Testament has this, look who comes from Basra with his clothes dipped in blood. And other places, the blood of grapes is referenced. So I sort of wonder, I mean, maybe the brother there is right that this is a dual meaning. That you know the church will depart before that planet leaves the constellation, you know, before the 13th or 14th. Uh, but this might be a more prophetic reference to the regathering of the Jewish people, and in context, maybe a reference there to the uh, his return, where his garments are dipped in blood, and the gathering of the people will be the Jewish people at the end of the age. So I don't mean to bum anybody out. I it could be a dual meaning, <laughs> and you know from looking at these articles, it sure seems like it's close at hand. But uh, I just want to, you know, stick with the scripture as much as possible, and I don't see constellation in these passages. But again, I'm not the planet guy. I'm the last one on the earth to look up into the heavens and understand what the constellations may be saying or what the wandering stars, as it has in Genesis, you know, the planets mean in context of the constellations. So I'm just giving you sort of the, the basic surface text interpretation, and it appears to me that these passages, at least in a surface reading, is pointing to Christ's actual second coming and the regathering of the Jewish people unto him. But, you know, Brother Daniel, he, he might be right with a dual meaning here. And so I'm not, not disregarding it. I'm, more, I'm just as excited as ever because I, I see all these things as being close at hand. I just, you know, I struggle here with, with the surface meaning not being recognized first. Usually when you talk about the secondary meaning, you have to give recognition to the the surface text and the surface text meaning. And if you say, yeah, but it's picturing two things, and you can go on to demonstrate that, amen, you know, God does that all over the text. But I just want to make sure that the surface text here is represented as well. So uh, God bless you, saints. I'm looking forward. You know, it's a big storm out right now. A lot of people think the Lord comes as the dark clouds roll in. So... Maybe this video won't ever get uploaded. <laughs> Maybe we'll get uploaded before the video does. <laughs> uh, God bless you, saints.